Good everyone, and welcome to today's video, and today it is a going to be another double upload of um, Spade Impressions. And today we are starting out with the BF109 G14. Now the G14 is one of the obviously one of the higher tier 109s that you can fly. And I've had this thing for quite some time and never really touched it. As I started spading it, I did have some questionable teams, let's just say that. But um, overall, it wasn't a bad spade. It could have been better because obviously I did have some really, really bad teams at one point. At one point, I had to fight four Corsairs of my own, and yeah, I didn't survive very long. But um, the BF19 G14 was one of the later developments of the BF19 series. It was also one of the heaviest. But the G14 has had a good reputation in War Thunder. Obviously, there is the Italian version, the AS, which I'm going to get around to spading at some point. And just overall, it's a really, really nice aircraft to fly. You obviously get the standard armament of the G Series 109s with two 20 mm, one 20 mm cannon in the nose and two 30 mm machine guns. If I've ne I've never covered the 13s on a German plane, but they freaking suck. I don't like them at all. But I'll go over what belts to use for them. You can also put on a 30mm in a nose hub, or you can put on gun pods, either 20mm or 30mm. My personal preference, go for the 20s. The 20s are the best. So the climb rate of the BF-19 G14 is actually pretty high. But what you've got to consider is, is that space fires. Griffin Spitfires will give you a hard time. LF Mark 9s will absolutely spank your ass. To the point where I actually bail out to deny LF Mark 9 players a kill because I'm just sick and tired of seeing their broken ass planes. I mean, my Dornier 335, which will, well, the A0 is going to be in the next review, just to point out. But um, the Dornier 335 A0 will be the next review, and he was actually catching my Do 335 A0 on the deck when it was basically spaded. No, not possible, Gaijin. But hey, we got to help the Spitfire retards, don't we? He was level 26, by the way, the guy who was chased by the plane. But um, the plane itself can turn reasonably well, can dive reasonably well, rolls pretty averagely. Once you get into high speeds, though, the roll rate is pretty much non-existent. The rudder is pretty good in terms of responsiveness. This plane can take a beating, which you are going to see in this game, if I save the right one. <laughs> but um yeah so let's jump right in and let's see what i got up to in the plane obviously i need to find it it is this one yes i thought it was you see i'm not the most organized at the moment but whatever it's no biggie is it but let me tell you this is actually a very fun playing the spade, and for those of you who want to see the G10, don't worry, I'll be working on that soon enough. Keyword, soon enough. Or keywords, I should say. So this was actually a pretty short battle. Um, it didn't feel like it, but... Yeah, really. So obviously, I am running the pods, two 20mm cannons. You get 270 rounds of gun in those, or per gun, or not per gun. You get 270 rounds in total, you get 135 rounds in each gun pod. They will run out before the main cannon in the prop hub, but they are really handy for taking out B-17s. I swear to God, every time I've killed a B-17, it's because of gun pods. With a single 20 you can do it, but I recommend using gun pods when it comes to dealing with B-17 bombers. But yeah, obviously, um, the G14 was actually a plane that I skipped. I um, I skipped it and just went for other planes that I thought were going to be more fun. But recently though, Allied teams have not been using as many P51Hs. I only had really two 6.3 games, and even then I got two kills in each. Did die on one of them. But um, I'll cover my stats at the end. But... Um, the play itself performed very well. Obviously, we are going to get not an ace. Was one off that. I didn't get an ace in this aircraft. I didn't get one in the Doe 335A0 either. My highest was three 
in the Doe 33580. I am working on the A1 model, which is the... I think it's the first production variant, that is. If I remember rightly. Um, Killer Tigger will know a thing or two about that. But I do like this sort of aircraft because the G14 has been a plane that I skipped for... Obviously, I, I said I skipped it. Didn't really say why. Reason why I skipped it? You used to fight F8, F1Bs and things like that, like they were going out of style. Nowadays, though, you don't tend to see that many. So, if you do need to spade some German 5.3 vehicles, now's your time. Honestly, now is your time. A lot of players will be flying Maulers, Wyverns, PV1Ds, B17, Spitfire later models, Narvals. It's perfectly fine. Get flying these planes and get spading them. I can honestly say, you're going to have a lot of fun. So obviously we're nearly three and a half minutes into the game and well obviously I have put it on four times speed just to get us going a bit. And, well, the team, for some reason, wants to go out their way to kill these B-17s, which was a bit unusual. Now, nickname for that Spitfire there, that LF Mark 9 American Premium, I call it the I Win Plane. For those of you that are not aware, I call it the I Win Plane because it is absolutely freaking broken. It is honestly one of the most overpowered planes I've ever seen in my life. Obviously, I can't catch him at this altitude. I couldn't even catch him on the deck if I tried. Because apparently that Spitfire flies like a 262. It is a very, very broken aircraft. I am not a fan of that thing being a premium. Yes, the US did use Mark 9 Spitfires. But they also use Mark V Spitfires, so why have we not got that thing changed to a Mark V yet? I do not know. It's just stupid. It honestly is stupid. Why give the US the most broken Spitfire in the game? I have no problem with the Griffins. The Griffins are fine. It's the LF Mark IX. Yes, at this point, I have actually descended, because obviously the LF Mark 9 has been dealt with. And, well, I'm going to have to go over to a small fry. There's a wyvern down here. And I thought, well, better time than never. I might as well go for this guy. First kill. Good boom and zoom pass, straight back up to the vertical. Obviously, I saw like three enemy planes there, so I turned away. The Doe should be able to outrun him, but he doesn't. The Doe pilot was clearly not spaded. So, Brad's Wolf is going to have a very bad day at the office. I think he's got. Yeah, he's got a Spitfire, he's got two PV1, he's got a PV1, and he's got an F82 on his ass. Sadly, this guy is going to die. Why is that? Well, half my team are on a fucking Tempest. But poor Brad's Wolf, he isn't going to get out this one alive, sadly. His plane's beaten up, he's losing airspeed. The Spitfire is catching him up, it is a Mark 16. And the F-82 is gaining on him, so he's dead. There's nothing he can really do. At this point, however, the fight against the Tempest has actually gone up to five planes. Yes, it's a Tempest Mark II, but no, does it not need that many planes on it? Obviously now, another plane is broken off this guy, so now it's just, obviously I am making my way over there to potentially deal with it. But, German teams recently have been questionable at best. And yet when I fight with my B-17, it's like fighting freaking... It's like fighting half the Luftwaffe solo. So obviously down here we do have a bit more small fry. 
that the small fry is actually nearly going to tear my face off. you got a Narval down there, a SO8000. He has fired off his rockets and he is going to start making his way to try and force a vertical stall climb. I don't know why he would even try this because I had the energy advantage. Narvals are not actually that bad to deal with, especially when they're brainless idiots like this. Bring it around, combat flaps down, bring it around, and good night, Vienna. Second kill. But that Mauler has just spanked me hard. What it doesn't show on the replay is that my entire coolant system on the right wing has just completely died. So I'm running on, shall we say, borrowed time here. But luckily the, the engine is going to survive long enough for the game to end. Get some nice hits into the mauler. It's just this mauler and the B-17E which you saw off to the side earlier on. Obviously I know a teammate's probably going to come and steal this so I want to make sure he's dead. There he goes. And that is my third kill. Not a bad result. Obviously, I let the team know the coolant's gone. I do have a bit of cannon ammo left. Obviously, that Mauler ate most of that, but there you go. But obviously, there's only one plane left, and obviously, I did say I got four kills, so you know exactly what the final kill's going to be. It's just B17E. Don't know why I was down here, but I thought I might as well get him. He's the last player alive on this team. If I can kill him, the game's going to end and we are going to win before my engine dies. And there we go. Fourth kill and the end of the game. So not a bad game, obviously. We did get pretty lucky against that Mauler, we'll be honest. But, um, yeah. gpf 4 G14. Highly rate this aircraft. It is really good and I'm looking forward to the G10. Obviously, Teammates will probably change that, but you never know. But yep, if you can get this aircraft, I highly suggest it. Um, she's reasonably maneuverable, as we saw. Can take a bit of a beating, and yeah, perfectly acceptable aircraft. It's very good for intercepting B-17s. Just don't intercept B-29 with it, whatever the hell you do. Killer Tigger tried that the other day in his Dofer 35A0 or A1, and nearly died because of it. But hey. Anyway, I'll see you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the BF1 and G14. Sorry about that, that was my headset cable. Um, and I will see you all on the next one. If you can get this aircraft, because it is in the 109G tree, please do have a go at it. And when I get ready to the G10, I'll obviously spade it. Hopefully it should be the same as this. And yeah. Anyway, I'll let you guys off. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all on the Dove 335 A0 Spade Impressions. See you then.